properly sanding the surfaces before sealer, base coat, and clear coat, well, it's pretty important in the outcome of your paint job. In fact, it's the foundation to your paint job. Things like using a dual action sander on all the flat surfaces can really level out a panel. You can follow that with sanding blocks and soft sanders for the rounded or crown surfaces, creating a system to where you can work smarter and not harder. And that's exactly what we did with our Z Sled 78 Camaro project. Check it out. Now this fender has been prepped and sanded exactly the same way as the rest of the parts that you just saw in the spray booth. And I've got it mounted on my super stand so I can get access to the back sides of the panels and the jams so I don't have any overspray or tape lines when I assemble this car. Now this fender obviously hasn't been prepped at all. It's an Eastwood High Build 2K primer surfacer in black. And although it's been body worked, it's nice and straight. It's not prepped, it's not ready for paint. So we're gonna show you exactly how we did it. Now, there's a difference in the strategy between a solid color and a metallic color. This, obviously, is getting a solid color. It's getting a black paint job. So, solid color, you can get by with 400 grit being your last stage of sanding. If you're spraying a metallic, you wanna finish off with 600 grit. That way, the metallic particles don't end up in those sand scratches and stand up and look weird. So, we're gonna prep for 400 on this panel. Now the goal is to finish off with 400 grit, but I'm going to start with 320. Now this technique is going to tweak some of you hardcore restoration guys if you're watching, but I have a collision repair background so I know how to sand with machines properly. And if you don't abuse a dual action sander, it can really help you out. This is flat. This is not. This is flat. This is flat. It's a mating surface. So I'm going to show you how to use a DA sander to where you don't carve up your panel or round off any corners. Start off with a relatively low speed on your sander and just sand the flat parts. This technique is about saving time and creating a very flat surface for your paint to sit on. You notice I'm using a light touch and only sanding the flat surfaces. The DA sander will damage the peaked edges and create distortion on curved surfaces so you gotta stop when your flats are sanded. Now this is the same grid, 320 on a soft sander. You can see what I did, but more importantly, you can see what I didn't do. I didn't ride my style lines. I didn't ride my convex and complex shapes. That's for hand sanding, but we just bought ourselves a bunch of time and saved ourselves a bunch of rubbing. So now I can use blocking techniques. One of the things I really like about the Eastwood Black 2K Primer is that it acts as its own guide coat. And you can tell when you've sanded through. You can tell when you're done with this step. And watch my technique. The block face is rounded slightly, and I'm rolling with this curve. Like I said, we've done our body work. The panel's shaped like we wanted and it's nice and straight where it needs to be nice and straight. So I don't want to change that by sanding. Spent a lot of time priming and blocking, and we don't want to go backwards. We don't want to rob ourselves of having done all of that hard work. And on these peak style lines, I've found that if they're too crisp, sometimes they look a little weird. So when I'm done blocking, I skate over them just a little bit, just to mute that peak edge, and it's still nice and straight but it looks just real clean and real crisp and just one step above factory. Your tendency is gonna to be to grab the air hose and blow the dust off and see if you've still got some stuff to sand. I wanna change your mind on this. The most obvious benefit is that we're not surrounded by a cloud of sanding dust that I'm sucking up into my lungs. The other benefit is that the dust is gone and now I can see if I'm finished sanding it. I've got a couple of holidays here, some stuff on the top, so I need to keep going just a little bit longer with 320. But here's the real point of using a shop vac for extraction. If you hit it with an air hose, there's a chance that you can blow that sanding dust into a pinhole if you've got filler work and you didn't know it was there. It's gonna show up in your paint job and cause you problems, cause you a solvent crater or a fisheye. By extracting the dust, you pull it out of those pinholes and they'll show themselves to you before you paint. Think about it. So now that I've got the surface exposed, sanded into, I'm gonna start using gloves because if it's a hot and sweaty day, the sweat and the acid from my fingers can be deposited into the paint job and come up through that clear, especially on a black. 
Ask me how I know. So we're gonna start with 400. So 400 is the same drill, but interestingly enough, when you change grits and you sand it thoroughly, the look of the panel changes. So again, the black 2K primer from Eastwood acts kind of as its own guide coat, even as you're switching grits moving up through your project. Red scuffing pads work great for inconsistent areas like this because you still want the paint to stick. You don't want it to peel off. And if it's not sanded, it's not going to stick. So these make short work of these types of areas. You can fold it over. Do your inner crevices and cracks. And just like I say in the Paintrucation DVDs, the harder it is to sand, the more important it is to sand it. Places like this, this is not where you want delamination when your car is put together and going down the road. Hey. I'm using my 400 to hand sand. If I block sand across this, this is just a line from the inner fender being pressed. Well, I'm gonna knock the top off. I'm not getting down in the groove. So, with the gloves, with the finger sanding, I can get down in here and prep these surfaces. Okay, here's a problem that you might have. If you remember, we put filler on these edges to close up our panel gaps. And look here, there's a low spot. So if I get in there with a sanding block and I block that flat, well, I've changed the fitment of the fender to the hood. I've created a gap there. So this is a technique I want to show you on how to get away with that. You can fill that in and it won't show up in your paint job when you open up that hood. This is a contour polyester glazing putty and the catalyst that goes with it. And this is a razor blade. The reason I use a razor blade is so I can get a very small amount and a little bit of catalyst and I can mix it up. A little bit more catalyst. Feeling like Bob Ross here, but I can mix it up and get a very small amount and go in and fix that pinhole with a very, very tiny amount. And I can judiciously apply it with my razor blade very flat. It's a minimal amount. So my filler's been sitting for a couple of minutes. It's sort of hard. I've got 320 on a block and Eastwood pre-painting prep. Now here's where you got to know the rules before you can break them. This is dry sanding paper and this is a wet solvent, but this is going to work. So I'm using my pre-painting prep and a wet sanding situation. And what that does is allow me to fill the low spot. The solvent activates the filler, but not the cured primer around it. So I'm not digging into the sides. I'm filling in and I'm leveling and I'm doing it quick. And now I'm ready for a sealer and top coat and you're never gonna know that space was there. And just to explain it again, my filler is much softer than the cured primer around it. The solvent makes it even softer, so it makes it easy for me to level this piece down, not affect the edge around it, not affect my panel fit between two panels, and I fill in my pinhole. So it's just a nice technique, and one that you can, you can get away with something to work. It's not really the intended purpose of that product, but it works great. All right, now we're gonna wipe it down, get it wet, see what it looks like. Gotta get the first layer of dust off first before you wet check with the final wipe solvent. Now the last final step that I like to do on something like this before paint is to wash it with soapy water. Use dishwashing soap too, because it cuts the grease. But before we do that, I wanted to show you our cool custom Z28 side vans. From the factory, these Z28 side gills went on from the outside. And to me, they always had kind of a cheap look because it's a cast metal, it's not that great, and it kind of bulges up. So all we did was figure out a clamping mechanism from the backside and mounted them from the reverse and it's such a clean, tasty, tidy look that costs nothing. We hope all these tips and tricks really help you get the job done and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel before picking up the supplies you need to do the job right.